Hello, I'm Dale Leslie, and I've invited to join me this evening Ann Arborite Carol Dunnitz, who has written and performed a new song that has become a music video. Happy Birthday Baby is the name of it. Welcome, Carol. Thank you so much, Dale. It's a pleasure to be here. Before I start asking questions, I think we should take a look at this video and uh, let people form their opinion about it. Across the globe, millions of people celebrate their birthdays each and every day of the year. Bon anniversaire, alles gut zum Geburtstag, feliz cumpleaños. Happy birthday, baby, yes, it's time to celebrate. Take a deep breath, blow out candles, make a wish and cut your cake. We'll share a toast to happiness and health throughout the year. Be filled with bliss, give love and you'll receive. May you cherish hope and prosper, steadfastly believe. May your follies lead to reason, try and you'll achieve. May you ride rough times with peace and joy. have to ask, how many costume changes were there? Well, there were 16 <laughs> costumes, uh, and most of them I wore more than once. So I, I, I'm going to say somewhere between 28 and 30. Wow. And uh, what happened was there was an hour prep or set up, a four-hour shoot, an hour breakdown, and unfortunately for one of the costumes, uh, the Bedouin one, the mask wasn't put on properly, so I had to go back and reshoot that one. So. Uh, you know, all in all, I'd say uh, under eight hours of, of filming, but wow. that, that's pretty significant. Wow. Um, tell us about what you're wearing tonight. Oh, this is my happy birthday outfit, uh, I, which I actually, for the first time in my life, I created a, an iron-on shirt <laughs> and uh, made the logo and then got the iron-on on stuff and went from store to store trying to find a white tank top <laughs> and la voila. <laughs> The, the hat uh, is something I bought online, but it, it, it uh, completes the ensemble. Well, you certainly are creative right down to the uniform you wear. Thank you. The costume, excuse <laughs> me. How did you have this idea come about to do a song like this? Well, you know, I've been performing really all my life, but more recently writing musicals, one-woman shows, and, and touring in them. 
And the problem is it doesn't matter how much the people who come love them. If you don't have awareness among the public, it's tough to book them, and then it's tough to get enough people in to see them. So I thought to myself recently, why not write some novelty songs? And it occurred to me that close to 21 million people celebrate their birthday every day of the year across the globe. Wow. Well, what could be a larger audience uh, than that? And that's how I got the idea to write a birthday song. Now, that being said, Dale, most of what I write tends to have a musical theater bent. So I wanted to do something that was a little, had a, more, a little more of a popular sound. So I went through uh, all my, um, oh, what do they call it? my treasure chest of songs. Basically, I have been, since I was maybe 10 years old, carrying around a tape recorder with me and recording musical ideas that come into my head. Oh my so I went into some from, let's say, the last year. And the melody for this song, I, not the bridge and, and the doo-wop part, but the melody came from that. And I thought, hey, you know, this would work for something that's a little more popular as sounding than niche sounding. And then I used that. Uh, to write the song and then as a, as a springboard and then moved ahead and created the doo-wop and, and, the, and the bridge, which if you noticed, the, the verses are in the major key, the bridge is in a minor key hmm. and because the, it's a little bit more serious. Right, right. Well, how did you get the idea of making a video of this uh, great song? I think that music is wonderful. It's, it's an international language. Uh, you know, everybody understands music and resonates with music. But to get more exposure, it seemed to me that doing a video, and, a, and a, particularly a creative video, could potentially draw in more interest than just the music itself. Right. Well, That's happy why. birthday, baby. I mean, if it gets played as much as happy birthday to you. <laughs> well. I mean, how many, is it an international song? Well, actually, it is. Uh, what happened was the, the, actu the music for it uh, comes from an old English ditty, you know, mm. uh, the actual melody for it. And yeah, in many countries, they have whatever stands for happy birthday to you that they sing along with that melody, hmm. which is quite amazing. So it is international. and uh, It is. Perhaps it, yours will be, too. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. Now, how many other songs have you written? Well... I've been writing songs since I was nine years old. Oh my God. So there, and, and the interesting thing is with the digital, digital age upon us and the fact that I'm taking Pro Tools, which is a sophisticated audio engineering uh, software, I'm taking a class in that right now, my plan is in the future to take all those countless tapes I have, and those are not digital, they're analog, <laughs> and play, play, the, play on a keyboard and get them all digitized so that I'll have a better reference point. But, I, but as far as music that is commercially available, I did a comeback song for Detroit years ago. Uh, I have written and produced two uh, musicals, and that, that music is available. One is Bernhardt on Broadway about Sarah Bernhardt, and that show has 12 songs. The other is Mrs. President Lincoln. That has 12 songs that are fully orchestrated and arranged and available. I've written many, many, many other songs, far, far too many to count. Wow. What is the one, two, three step process to writing a song? I've always that's wondered. A, that's an excellent question. The reality is everyone does not write the same way. And what I see from my reading and listening is that nowadays it's very typical to start with a drum beat mm. because there's so much emphasis now on mm -hmm. the beat, the rhythm. But that's not the way I write a song. Uh, with me, the melody comes first, mm -hmm. and then you can decide how you want to arrange it. The reality is you can take the same song and arrange it many different ways. Now, a lot of people sit down at the keyboard or their guitar, and they try and figure out something. For me, and I'm not comparing myself to Mozart, only, <laughs> only how he came up with his music. Um, music would come into his head, and he'd then immediately get out paper and pencil and or pen and paper and, and write it down. Uh, I find myself, it's always been this way, when I'm exposed to a new environment, to a new person, to a new idea, all of a sudden music comes into my head. Hmm. And uh, normally I don't have paper and pencil around, so I take out that 
what used to be a, a tape recorder, now it's a digital recorder, <laughs> and I'll, I'll sing the melody into it, and then I can write it out at, at a later point in time. And I do actually write, you know, notate it and uh, decide on what chords are going to be used so, uh, and preserve it that way after the initial recording. So if the music develops first and then you tailor the words to the music? Uh, well, that's a good question. What actually happens with me, because I'm responding to uh, an idea or an environment, is often the first line of, of, uh, of the song comes with the music. Mm. Not always, but often. Right? And it, it's not that that can't be changed, but it really, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a good springboard. And if I remember those first few words, that few sentence, mm -hmm. that, that first sentence, it um, helps me focus in on what the music was with actually, without actually going back to the taped version. Hmm. I always wondered what the approach was. You know, for instance, with Rogers and, and uh, Hart and Rogers and Hammerstein, when Rogers wrote with Hart, uh, the music was written first. And when he wrote with Hammerstein, the lyrics were written first. Is that That's right? my understanding. So oh. it really depends. Huh. With me, you know, it's, if, do I call it Carol 1 and Carol 2? If this Carol decides this, then the other one goes along <laughs> or what have you. Oh, my. Well, what gave you the idea of writing a birthday song? Well, when I decided to do a novelty song, first I thought of doing something perhaps political because we are in a politically charged environment. Uh, I've written uh, a very funny, just the lyrics now for a, for a rap song because I've never written a rap song before and that may get done in the, in the future. But the more ideas I came up with uh, and discarded and finally narrowed things down, uh, birth, the, uh, doing a happy birthday song was the go-to uh, idea. And then how did you get the idea for the video? Well, that's interesting. I was, uh, you know, you, we lose sight of how many people are ac actually live on Earth. And I, after, first, at first I was thinking about maybe having a birthday party going on in, in the background while I sang. And I had a concern because so much that's produced nowadays has an emphasis on youth. And I, I needed to do something that would overcome what I see as being a little bit of a bias in that way. And when I, went, when I discovered how many people are on Earth, and you, multiply, you divide that by 365, and you come up with the fact that close to 21 million people celebrate their birthday each and every day of the year, well, that seemed like a good angle. And then... Dale, you're not going to believe this. All the costumes in that video, except one, I own. And I have been collecting them ever since I was 17. Uh, when I was 17 years old, I, my first summer after college, I was traveling in Europe, and I got those lederhosen. And they still fit. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, that's, that's amazing, I think. Huh. There is a story behind every costume. The last one, which I didn't own, the Holland Visitors Bureau in Holland, Michigan, allowed me to borrow, which, oh. which I really appreciated. Oh. But uh, a few other stories. When I wore the flamenco dress, uh, where did that come from? Well, I have been to Spain uh, several times, but my youngest daughter was there and has a good friend whose family uh, is from Spanish background. Anyway, I said to her, Jocelyn, while you're there, would you please get me a flamenco dress? And she said, Mom, I can do that, but how will I know what size to get? And I said, honey, you try them on and then add, <laughs> add two sizes. And, and as you can see from the video, it, it worked. Uh, when I was visiting China with a friend a number of years ago, I went into this costume shop and saw this gorgeous, uh, well, you saw the purple outfit from China, which is, the design is from, I don't know how you pronounce it, it's the Q-I-N-G dynasty. And... Uh, I was just so extraordinarily impressed with all the, the stitching and the handwork. So I bought that then. Um, trying to think. How about the Japanese dress? The Japanese, well, OK. My, one of my daughters, my eldest, Helen, studied in Japan for a year and a oh. half. So when I visited her, of course, we had to go look at, at, <laughs> at traditional uh, Japanese clothing. <laughs> and I decided that, that out, the one you're talking about, I, it's a wedding uh, coat. And you can't even imagine how well it's lined and how heavy it is mm. and even i mean it's 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 quite a piece of uh of art but when i went to the shop all the women who worked there they couldn't understand why i wanted a japanese wedding coat <laughs> and the thing is a lot of uh people from japan are smaller so they couldn't <laughs> actually find one that was the right size 
but I ordered it, and when something came in that worked, I ordered it, I paid for it, and they shipped it to me back in the United States. So all the costumes except one are personal property of yours. They are. And what kind of closet do you have to store them in? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, need, I, don't, I need more than closets, needless to say. So I have a number of racks, like you'd see in a store. Well, where did you get the idea for the language that appears behind you on the screen? Well, that was just going on the Internet and, and uh, you know, looking up how do you say happy birthday in, well, some, some languages I know. I speak French mm -hmm. and some German. Uh, and I think in the United States, many of us have had a lot of exposure to Spanish. But uh, on that backdrop, which uh, there's uh, Russian, there's Hebrew, there's Arabic, you name it. <laughs> and uh, that was part of the... Uh, part of the idea was to bring people in from around the world and interestingly enough my video my music video has been up on YouTube for about four and a half days now wow. the day before yesterday I received an email from someone from India and another person from Nairobi oh my gosh. so uh, it's 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 traveling around the world see and and our birthdays literally observed everywhere I mean as far as you know as far as I know for the most part, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's universal, but for the most part. Wow, that's great. Well, let's talk about how long it took to shoot this video. Uh, what were the steps there? Well, as I mentioned, we uh, there was setup and breakdown, and then the reshoot. I would say the shooting time in total was about five hours, mm -hmm. but that was only because I had a dresser. I, I brought along a friend who helped me take each thing off and put, you know, the the next one on. Uh, and, the, of course, the more difficult ones to put on were the sari. And I'm not sure we got that exactly right, but close. <laughs> and, um, oh, there was one other one that was, uh, took more time. Well, in, in any case, so part of that process was being able to move things along. Mm -hmm. If I had not had a helper, there's no way I could have done it that quickly. Well, wasn't there a student videographer involved? Yeah, this was shot at Washtenaw Community College. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Yeah, where, and uh, they have a wonderful program there and a, and a great facility. The, uh, they actually booked the, the room for me and booked someone to do the shoot. And the reason they did that for me is because I, I, I don't know if you know, but I have a doctorate in speech communication and theater. So it's not like I haven't, you know, right. been through school, <laughs> but I'm currently taking classes there. Uh, and during the summer, I took something in Adobe Premiere Pro. <laughs> I'm currently taking something with Pro Tools. And because I'm a student, uh, I was given access to those resources, oh my gosh. which was terrific. Wow. And what do you do in your, in your spare time? <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, don't, I don't know where to start. I've, uh, I've, I've actually researched uh, and organized the material for two more show, uh, musical comedy, musical shows. So that's on the, you know, Mm -hmm. on my list of things to do. I practice the piano maybe every other day. I swim once every day. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, there's certain things all of us have our routine. And, of course, what I'm going to be very involved with now after putting this music video on YouTube is coming up with a marketing plan beyond, yeah. you know, the initial obvious steps mm -hmm. in order to get the word out and to get more exposure. Because the whole idea behind this was to get increased exposure and increased awareness so it would make it easier for me to book my shows. Right, right. Well, that makes sense. Now, most people uh, probably don't appreciate what goes in once you have filmed whatever you're producing, what goes into editing it, putting it together so it flows and uh, it looks sharp. Well, and that's absolutely true. What happens when you're done editing, people look at it and think, Oh, it was such a such right. a breeze, yeah. and I have to tell you that is not the case. And I am not an aficionado with editing. Uh, I did get some direction from Phil Ra Phil Ratchford, who uh, works in the uh, studio at, at Washtenaw, which was extraordinarily helpful. And he directed me on things I had to do to be able to do with to deal with the green screen, which is how this was shot. The way a green screen works is, in fact, uh, they have one here, although we're not against a green screen for this interview. Uh, they edit out the green, so all that's left in the case of my video was me in whichever costume. Hmm. So first, you have to edit out the green background so you can put something else in the background, mm -hmm. which in the case of this music video was all the, all the language, yeah, right. all the, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the, in different sizes and typefaces, 
and languages, happy birthday, mm -hmm. which of course that also had to be created and, and that was done in uh, Adobe Illustrator. Mm. But in any case, after the green screen is edited out, uh, and that, that takes a, a lot of time, and since I haven't been doing it for a long time, it took me longer. The answer is, I think it took between 40 and 50 hours to oh. edit this. Mm. So if it took under oh. eight hours mm. to, uh, to do the photography, to mm -hmm. do the videotaping, it took maybe close to five times more to do the editing. Oh my gosh. So when you're performing, the language behind you is actually not behind you. It's not behind, there's just, yeah. it's all green. I'll be there. And typically what's happened, you see green screens more often than blue screens, but this kind, this uh, way of dealing with things is done with either green or blue, blue screens in the background. And when, when they use them, they tell you, don't wear that color, because mm -hmm. if you wear anything that that's color, then that'll get edited out when you, yeah, uh, yeah. When you edit out the green screen mm -hmm. or the blue screen. Boy, that's interesting. I didn't have that luxury. I, I knew that I couldn't, uh, that, that I didn't want my costumes to blend in. And really, in terms of the editing, I only had trouble with the Mexican dress. Hmm. Uh, there, was so, there were so many colors in it that oh. I, instead of having it appear twice, I had it appear once because I really wasn't as satisfied with the editing in mm. that outfit be, because yeah. of the way uh, editing out the right. background and so forth worked. Huh. Well, in promoting this video, it must be, there must be ample ways to do it these days. And what are kind of some of your plans? Well, it, as you know, it, it's on YouTube. It, I put it on Facebook, been, put it on Twitter. Uh, I've put, I've, I've contacted or, or put it on, and Facebook has some birthday uh, groups. Oh, good. So I put it up there. Some yeah. people have seen it. I've emailed it out to some people I know. Mm -hmm. I've used LinkedIn. But really, that's just the tip of the iceberg. After mm -hmm. you start with those things, you really need to get more uh, creative. Mm -hmm. I've just created a flyer, although it's not printed yet. I plan on contacting all the uh, talk show hosts for daytime and uh, mm -hmm. Night, uh, nighttime talk show hosts uh, in the hope that maybe there would be some interest because of the fact that so many people celebrate birthdays. Right. Not right. just once, but every, every, <laughs> every year. I, um, I'll probably contact some film companies mm -hmm. in the hopes that maybe someone might want to use it in one of their movies. Oh, yeah. uh, I think it, it really is a matter of using a tremendous amount of creativity mm -hmm. to think not only how can I directly or more directly reach someone or a certain group mm -hmm. of people, but what are the way, way, other w ways can I get there? Hmm. And uh, I, in a sense, uh, you want to have something that's quality and, and, and really good, but the fact is you can have the most beautiful jewel in the world, but if you keep it locked in your safety <laughs> deposit box, no one can appreciate yeah. it. And yeah. the issue in today's world is there are so many people and there are so many outlets for information that it becomes a real challenge. There has to be a website out there that features new songs, isn't there? I mean, I would think there would be. I don't know of anything like that. And really? But the point is, even if there were, how many people would be going to, yeah. to see that website? And the reality is, uh, particularly with the technology that's out there today, mm -hmm. with MIDI and keyboards and, mm -hmm. and you know, MIDI guitars and so forth, there are so many people writing songs and I'm not sitting in judgment, but mm -hmm. obviously only a certain percentage are going right. to be something that would have uh, more as opposed to less appeal. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think mm -hmm. uh, what's important is to find a way, an avenue for reaching your target audience, mm -hmm. and that's the challenge because, uh, you know, is Jimmy Fallon or Ellen DeGeneres going to be interested? <laughs> well, uh, one thing I know is you don't know unless you approach them. <laughs> well. Now, I'm sure the people at home are asking, how do I get a copy of this song? Well, of course, they can, they can see, uh, see the video on, on YouTube. Uh, it's registered at CD Baby. And uh, I guess, you know, through those venues, they can, they can see it or hear it or possibly get a copy. Right, because I'm sure there are a lot of people that have heard it and are anxious to Get a copy. You know, Dale, in this day and age, people think nothing of downloading something from the internet. <laughs> so, you know, they can buy it. They probably can download it for free as well. Well, we have just a few minutes left, but tell us about some of your other projects. Well, uh, 
my whole life from the time I was a, a young person, from the time my mother took me to see Gypsy at the Schubert Theater, which was about to be torn down, <laughs> uh, I became in love with the musical theater. So uh, about eight years ago, I made the decision to start following a dream that I'd had for my whole life. And so that first show was Bernhardt on Broadway about Sarah Bernhardt, mm -hmm. the uh, great French actress who 100 years ago was the most famous woman in the world. Mm -hmm. I read close to 100 books in French and English to do the research and uh, created this two-hour show with 12 songs. Mm -hmm. The next show which I researched was, uh, the, uh, what, I did, what I learned from that show is even though Sarah Bernhardt was the most famous actress in the world 100 years ago, many people don't know about her who she was today. Mm -hmm. So the idea was, okay, well, who can I do something about that everyone knows? Mm -hmm. And I settled on Abraham Lincoln. Mm. And to tell his story and the story of the Civil War, I decided to do it through his wife, Mary Todd. Mm -hmm. So I, again, read a voluminous a number of books, not as many as for Bernhard on Broadway. And uh, what was really nice is they were all in English. <laughs> and, then I, and I created that show. Um, the one, and that has 12 so songs and is two They're both one-woman shows, mm -hmm. 12 songs, two hours long. The uh, shows that I'm planning on, on writing next, which are fully researched, uh, one is about a madam around the turn of the century, not just this past one, but mm -hmm. you know, around 1900, uh, who was the most uh, infamous madam in New Orleans. Wow. And the other is about a woman who lived as a man in the... Uh, Mid, mid to late 1800s out west. <laughs> so uh, I've got some fun, uh, some, fun, some fun projects in the offing. We have a niche there as far as uh, something that's unique that you feature. I mean, I would have to say, I, I don't know very much about whatever you're, you've done to this point, but would like to learn. Well, that's something I r really like about what I do. It's not, these are not like Hollywood musicals. Right. Everything is factual. I, everything is based on truth and mm -hmm. on reality. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm doing is not only entertaining people, but I'm educating them. And I think that's kind of fun. Now, if uh, folks are out there, a group or whatever, that would like to take advantage of that particular talent you have, how can they get in touch with you? Well, uh, my email is cdunnitz at gmail.com or my phone number is 734-237-6614. Very good. Well, um, what can I say? You, you're certainly one of the, the busiest people I think I know. And, I'm having uh, a lot of fun. Well, you know, and the thing that impresses me the most is the diversity of all your interests. My goodness gracious, how many of us dabble in such a wide spectrum? Uh, granted, it all tends to be musically oriented, but I think you're be, to be commended for looking into other projects and, and you know, the, the sky's the limit. Well, you know, I think uh, the central thing, like you said, is the music. Mm -hmm. But the reality is if you can take many of your interests and somehow find a way to, you know, telling things musically is fun because many people, it, it's a universal language. Mm -hmm. So if you can take many interests and somehow put them under one hat, maybe I should put my hat back on, <laughs> uh, and make them work, well, I'm, I'm not going to be able to talk about physics probably <laughs> with music, but with many things... You do it musically, and it adds another dimension, which is kind of fun. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, thank you again for coming on today and talking about your diverse musical talent. Thank you, Dale. It's been a pleasure.